Good day, everybody. I want to talk about the value of communication. What's the value of communication? How do we value communication, not only in the workplace, but the home place as well? To be able to do so, we have to understand a little bit more about what communication is and how communication has changed over the years. We'll end with some really good thoughts on how we can be not only a better communicator, but how our world can be better through the value of communication, greater communication, more extensive communication, more broader communication, and how it would further our overall ambitions, not only as someone seeking employment or somebody seeking to have better relationships, but also to seeking to interact more throughout the world in a, in a positive and constructive manner. So first, let's talk about what is communication. Quite simply, communication is the process of sharing something with someone. We can talk about encoding and decoding where you encode a message and you send it across a channel or a mechanism and then you decode it in some way. That's the more formal definitions. But in general, communication is about sharing information with anyone, sharing any type of information. We do that today through telephones and emails, YouTubes. Certainly Facebook is the most prevalent form of communication as is text messaging. We actually communicate more with text messaging than ever before. And with that text messaging and Facebook, it all relates to technology. And technology, one of the great things about technology, is it has made communication cheaper and far more accessible than the average um, individual 30 years ago could communicate. In fact, most of it was by telephone or even the hand letter through the mail. We've seen that decrease marketably. We've even seen the use of telephones marketably decrease. As I mentioned, most of the communication today is through text messaging. I want to see a high prevalence of it through social media. But it raises a central question that we have to answer, not only as we go through school or go through the workplace, but the central question is, is, is today's form of communication one that allows and facilitates more interactions, more connectedness among individuals, or are we becoming less connected to the world, even disconnected? Are we becoming more isolated than ever before, even though we have so many more forms of communication to utilize? I think that's a central premise or thesis that so many are expanding upon in today's world, that though we have more tools to communicate, we actually communicate less person to person than ever before. And is that necessarily true? If it is, it is a central issue of our time. But also there are some aspects, if it is, that we may want to consider to ensure that we have this connectedness amongst individuals throughout the world. We'll talk more about why it's so important to have that. So let's look at how communication has changed. If we now know what communication is, which is just the sharing of something with someone, pretty basic definition, we'll soon find out that communication has really been a mechanism, a form that has existed certainly for centuries. We've went from newspapers to television to social media in really just a very short period of time, about 50 years. Newspapers actually started in the late 1600s, 1690 to be, uh, to be specific. And by the 1960s, we've actually moved more from newspapers to television. In fact, if you see a couple of statistics um, that have been promoted quite considerably, in the 1960s, about 76% of the population read a newspaper on a daily basis. In fact, there was a newspaper delivered to just about every household in the 1960s about 123% of households received a newspaper. The reason is, is they received more than one. So the way in which we received our news was from a newspaper. However, by the 1960s, network news became quite popular and we went from 60 million newspapers produced on a daily basis in 1960 and to today, about 31 million. It's more than just network news, but you can see that there's been a dramatic decrease in fact, the 76% statistic that I gave you about those reading newspaper on a daily basis today, about 
So that has fallen by about a thir about two thirds. That's a tremendous decrease in the amount of people who are reading a newspaper on a daily basis. What has taken its place? About 43% of the U.S. today get their news from some type of social media. A majority of people who get their news from social media get it from Facebook. Yes, Facebook is now disseminating more news, if you look through social media, than ever. And almost half of people today receive their news from social media. They don't receive their news from the network news, even CNN or Fox News. They don't receive their news from newspapers. Almost a majority receive their news from social media. And of those getting their news from social media, quite a big, quite a significant amount receive it from Facebook. And so we see now that of the, of the adults today, about 70 and almost 80% of people use social media. It's a tremendous increase. And in fact, in, from 2005, it was only 5%. So the prevalence of social media is one that you certainly uh, can't deny. About 30% of the world's population has Facebook, and that is about 2.5 billion monthly users. We have about 7.7 .7 billion people throughout the world, and 2.5 um, our monthly users at Facebook. It's a tremendous phenomenon that didn't exist some time ago. And that's all led, this change from newspapers to television to now social media has created a number of challenges in communicating. So we see that mass tradi tra traditional media is certainly waning. We've talked about newspapers, we've talked about network news, but the Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram era has uh, dominated the transition of media and it will continue to do so. The second aspect that makes it more challenging is the world is more diverse than ever. It doesn't mean that it's becoming diverse in terms of numbers. What it means is given the prevalence of technologies, we have more awareness and we have more exchanges with people of a diverse background. Whereas before you had people who lived in India, people who lived in um, India or uh, Japan today were able to communicate with those individuals. In fact, we're able to shop uh, in India. India is able to shop in the United States and as a result we're able to communicate much more than ever before. So there's a great diversity because technology has allowed us, has exposed us to the world's possibilities. The third is that there's more options to spend our time typically or usually in the past, you would watch a number of TV channels um, and you didn't have access to social media. I think I've given you the increase in social media from 2005 to today from 5% to 79. So we have many more options to spend our time. What's interesting is that the average individual today spends about nine hours on some type of technology, whether it's TV, whether it is Facebook, whether it's texting, nine hours. The average person, in fact, picks up their phone a hundred times a day, a hundred times a day. It's amazing how technology has given people so many more options. However, we tend to, the fourth challenge is we tend to be a bit more isolated than ever before. We now find that there's a move towards more individualistic aspects rather than the collective. We have take out online purchases, telecommuting, um, and even texting. So we're not talking to people on the phone. We're not working with people in the workplace. We're not shopping with people uh, in the shopping malls and we're not eating with people in the restaurants. In fact, 67% uh, of millennials uh, would rather shop online. It's about 41% of baby boomers, a tremendous figure. And about 34% of people today would rather stay home. Those are people between 18 and 34 years old. So the younger generation would rather stay home. It was only 8% in 1970. It's a tremendous increase. So we're spending more and more of our time. Is it a challenge of communication? Absolutely. More people are becoming more isolated. They'd rather spend more time alone or more time on some type of technology. Nine hours a day, the average person spends on technology, then spending time with others. In fact, as we'll see, the average person only spends 38% um, talking with friends on a day, uh, 38 minutes a day. It's a tremendous change in the way that we spend our time. So why do we communicate? We talked about how we communicate. We talked about some of the challenges, but why we communicate and why is communication so important? 
It's so important because it is what we share. We learn what communication is. It's sharing. It's sharing what we have and what we know with others. It's a sharing mechanism. And by sharing, we understand. We understand individuals. We understand where they came from, what their hopes and aspirations are. And if we understand people, then we have a chance to connect with people. It's a really important aspect, this connection aspect. We connect, which is the foundation of relationships. So if we can share, then we understand people. If we understand people, we can connect with people. And if we can establish a connection, we have a better chance of creating what we call a community, which is a community among different, uh, different people, uh, different generations, different backgrounds, customs, people who have different hopes, dreams, and aspirations, but also we appreciate differing cultures, customs, and traditions. So that's what we hope to do, and that's what communication allows us to do. That's why what this presentation is trying to get across is so important. Because if we share, we understand. If we understand, then we are we have connections with people. And if we can make connections with people, we have a great chance, a perfect chance, in fact, of creating a community. A community of people who have similarities in, in terms of hopes and aspirations, but also that we appreciate the differences as well. So what determines our success as a communicator? Well, you have to certainly know your audience. That's an important aspect. You have to care about the issue. They have to care about the issue. So if you know your audience, which is a, a group of individual or like-minded people, they have to care about the issue, whether it's sports or health or money. There has to be something that people care about. If you think about a television channel, if you don't care about the issue, you're going to change the channel. And so you have to make sure that your audience cares about what you're going to be talking about and that they also thirdly care about the relationship which means that they care about you as a person and so if you're a supervisor they may care about you if you're a parent they may care about you but as children are younger they often don't care especially the teenage years they may not have that kind of relationship with their parents so they may not care about their relationship as much. Oh, that's just my parents. Oh, that's just my grandparents and they're older, different generation. And lastly, you have to generally understand the issue. So determining what determines the success of us as a communicator, communications in general, is that you have to know your audience. You have to care about the issue. You have to make sure they care about the issue. It's much easier to talk about global warming when people are worried about climate change. The third thing is they have to care about the relationship. It has to be somebody that they're going to listen to. And last but not least, is they have to generally understand the message. And it leads us to what I would call are the best communicators. As we started this presentation, I talked about communication and why communication exists and how often we have communicated in the past and how often we communicate today. Communication has certainly been a thread from one generation to another, one history and one century to another. But we use different mechanisms. There's different expectations in relation to communication. And because of that, we have to know that how to communicate to people that we may not have a familiarity to, a background to. How do we do that? So first, you have to know the key points to make. Whenever a student or a person, a student is writing a paper or a person's doing an assignment at work, I always tell them, take out a, a yellow sticky note or post-it note and put it on your computer screen of the key point that you want to make. That what do you want the audience to leave your presentation with? In a couple of slides, I'm going to tell you exactly what I hope you leave this presentation with. And so you tell them, tell them again, and then tell them what you told them. And that's what's important about being a good communicator is know exactly what you want to communicate. The second aspect is to know who your audience is. And we've talked about that. We've talked about if you're going to be talking to children, you speak differently than young adults versus older adults, people who are employed and people who aren't employed. And so you have to understand what your audience is looking for in relation to your discussion. And then you have to make sure that you can deliver to that audience. Third is you have to choose the right communication tool. We know that Facebook is the dominant social media platform, but we also know this, that YouTube is almost as dominant as Facebook. So you have to figure out where best it's, you can communicate a certain message, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, whatever it may be, some kind of platform that's going to reach the intended audience that you want. 
So choose the right communication tool. We may not have the money or time to choose all of these tools, so you have to choose the right tool. Fourth, when you communicate, the more that you can ensure that your message is based on facts and statistics rather than opinions and generalities, you're going to be successful. And that really is what determines success in some ways, is stay on facts and statistics. But the fifth aspect, um, you may say that's in contrast to what I had just said, and that is you have to perform and not present. You have to make sure that when you give a presentation, it's a performance. When you think of people who act drama or you think of commercials that you remember the most, it's often because they either tug at your heart or they make you laugh. It's one of those two, in some ways, extremes. The more that you can capture your audience's attention, the better chance you have of ensuring that your message reaches them in the most preferred way. And lastly, make sure again that you pay attention to your audience. We call this feedback. You have to make sure and do check-in questions and check-out questions. Are they learning? Are they paying attention? Are they sleeping? Are they using their phones? And you have to continually have this feedback mechanism, or what we call a loop, to make sure that you're, you're bringing your audience along on your conversations. And if we can do that, we can overcome some of the key challenges of communication today. And although there are challenges, there are also opportunities. If we can remember how to communicate, then we can share information um, because information has never been more accessible, cheaper, or simpler. And science has allowed us to do that. There's 4.5 billion monthly users of the internet, internet which is 60% of the population. It's a, it's a tremendous amount. If you can think about 60% of every person on this earth, 60% have access to the internet. Internet. It's an amazing amount. We can now sell just about anything to almost anyone. If you think of the Dollar Shave Club or eBay, if you have a product or a service to sell, it's very easy for you to sell it online. Whereas before you would have to pay a marketer, you would have to develop some type of marketing campaign. Oftentimes you had to do it in the area in which you live. But now you can sell a product to anywhere in the world. Now capturing their attention can be a challenge. But just about anyone can sell anything to anyone today. Third is society is becoming more solitary. We talked about that. We shop, eat, work, and converse without ever leaving our homes. And that's leading in some ways to the challenge of our age, which is creating a community without meeting and interacting with those that share our world. And that leads to our last thought, which is communication. It is communication that will create industries, build communities, and make the world a better place. And I believe that implicitly. Communication will create industries and jobs that come with it. It will build communities and a society um, that comes with it. And it will make the world a better place. But it will do that by individuals who share what they know, who learn what they can, who meet those they see, and lastly, who contribute to something good. So you have to share what you know and you have to contribute to something good. If you share and contribute, that is communication. In fact, that's the ultimate form of communication. So in this discussion, I hope you remember to share everything that you can and contribute, contribute your unique skills and, uh, and your abilities to anybody that you come across. Sharing and contributing will create the world in which we all want to inhabit. Thanks everybody for listening to our discussion on communication. It's important, it's worth, it's challenges, but also the opportunities. With that, everybody, enjoy the day.